Hey guys, do you ever think about angels? I feel that there's a, a bigger focus on demons right now in the world. I mean, just look at the movies and the TV series in these last few decades. But when it comes to angels, there's not really a lot of truth on angels out there in the world. So do you ever think about angels? Do you know what they look like? Do you know what they do? How many angels are there? How powerful are they? And do we really have guardian angels? Well, in this video, we're gonna take a look at some of these questions and a few more. So let's get right into it. Now, just very quick, if it's your first time here on my channel, welcome to DLM Christian Lifestyle. And please consider subscribing and then also clicking that notification bell so you won't miss any of the next videos. Now, we're gonna talk about 12 amazing and interesting facts about angels. So let's start with the first one. Now, when we study the word, we see that angels are created and spiritual beings. The physical world that you can see, hear, smell, touch, feel, is not our real reality. We live in a physical and a spiritual world. And that is why some atheists don't believe in God because they only focus on the physical. But God created everything that is seen and unseen. And that includes the angels. Colossians 1 verse 16 says, For by him all things were created in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or authorities. All things were created through him and for him. Now the angels are also part of the universe that God created. We see that in Nehemiah 9 verse 6. You alone are the Lord. You have made heaven the heaven of heavens with all their host. Angels are beings with high intelligence and moral judgment. It is clear that when we look at scripture and we read about angels, we see that angels are very intelligent, especially when they talk to human beings. Let's take a look at Matthew 28 verse 1 to 7. Now, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week began to dawn, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat on it. His countenance was like lightning and his clothing as white as snow. And the guards shook for fear of him and became dead men. But the angel answered and said to the woman, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And indeed, he is going before you into Galilee. There you will see him. Behold, I have told you. Wow, imagine how they felt seeing and hearing this angel. Now, I also said that angels have moral judgment. And so how do we know this? Well, it's clear that when we study scripture, we see that some of the angels disobeyed God and they lost their positions. They lost their positions as angels of the Lord because they sinned and because they chose to disobey God. 2 Peter 2 verse 4 says, For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and deliver them into change of darkness to be reserved for judgment. Angels are spirits. Hebrews 1 verse 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? So angels are spiritual beings and we can't usually see them unless God allows us to see them. Just like he did with Balaam in Numbers 27 verse 31. Or with Elisha, the young man in 2 Kings 6 verse 17. Now, although angels are spiritual beings, they can also take on a bodily form. Listen to this. Hebrews 13 verse 1 to 2. Let brotherly love continue. Do not forget to entertain strangers. For by so doing, some have unwittingly entertained angels. 
So it is very possible that you might have talked to an angel and not even know it because there are many angels. So how many angels are there? Well, the Bible doesn't give us a fixed number, but it does say thousands upon thousands. Revelation 5 verse 11 says, Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands of thousands. Imagine that sight. Next time you pray, to the God who sits on the throne of the universe. Remember this picture of these thousands and thousands of angels. God is much bigger and greater than we can even imagine, with thousands upon thousands of angels worshiping Him. Hebrew 12 verse 22 also talks about the innumerable company of angels. And Psalm 68 verse 17 says, The chariots of God are 20,000, even thousands of thousands. If you could just see the real reality that we all live in right now, if God would just open your spiritual eyes and you can see all the angels, the spiritual warfare, it will blow your mind. But maybe I'll make a video about that sometime. Angels are not just called angels. There are also other biblical names for angels. Terms like holy ones in Psalm 89 verse 5 and 7 and sons of God in Job 1 verse 6 and 2 verse 1. Watchers in Daniel 4 verse 13. Dominions, principalities and authorities in Colossians 1 verse 16. And then of course spirits in Hebrew 1 verse 14. Another interesting thing is that there are also different types of heavenly beings, like the cherubim. Genesis 3 verse 24 says, So he drove out the man, and he placed cherubim at the east of the Garden of Eden, and a flaming sword which turned every way to guard the way to the tree of life. So God gave the cherubim this great task of guarding the entrance of the Garden of Eden. But that's not all. The Psalm 18 verse 10 says, And he rode upon a cherub and flew. Ezekiel 10 verse 1 to 22 also talks about the cherubim. Verse 3 says, Now the cherubim were standing on the south side of the temple. Verse 5 says, And the sound of the wings of the cherubim was heard, even in the outer court, like the voice of Almighty God when He speaks. Verse 12 says, and their whole body with their back, their hands, their wings, and the wheels that the four had were full of eyes all around. Verse 14 says, And everyone had four faces. The first face was the face of the cherubim, and the second face was a human face, and the third the face of a lion, and the fourth the face of an eagle. But the cherubs are guardian angels of God, close to God. Exodus 25 verse 22 says, And there I will meet with you, and I will speak with you from above the mercy seat, from between the two cherubim which are on the ark of the testimony. Okay, now apart from the cherubim, the Bible also talks about a heavenly being called seraphim. Isaiah 6 verse 2 to 7, Above it stood seraphim. Each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory. Now this shows us just how holy God is because the seraphim He created keeps on calling Him holy, holy, holy. Okay, so we talked about the cherubim, the seraphim. Then there's a very powerful angel called the Archangel. 1 Thessalonians 4 verse 16 says, For the Lord Himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an Archangel, and with the trumpet of God. Wow, just imagine that day. Alright, so the Bible talks about an Archangel. Now, we don't know how many there are, but we do know one of them, called Michael. We see this in Jude 1 verse 9. Now it's important to know that there's only two angels named in Scripture. First, of course, Michael, the archangel, and then there's Gabriel, the messenger of God. 
Now, the angels are God's army, right? And so they fight a spiritual battle, warfare against the devil and his demons, right? Even though you can't see it, that's what's happening right now. And they are also behind the earthly armies. Let me show you. Daniel 10, verse 10 to 14. Suddenly a hand touched me, which made me tremble on my knees and on the palms of my hands. And he said to me, O Daniel, man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak to you and stand upright, for I have now been sent to you. While he was speaking this word to me, I stood trembling. Then he said to me, Do not fear, Daniel, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God, your words were heard. And I have come because of your words, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. Now, he's not talking about a human prince here. He's talking about a very powerful demon behind the army of Persia. Now, the Bible also describes a very powerful angel, the archangel, as a prince or a chief prince. Let's continue and you'll see what I'm talking about. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. So here we get a glimpse into the spiritual world. We don't just live in a physical world. We live in a spiritual unseen world as well that affects the physical. And you got to remember that God is spirit and he can only be worshipped in spirit and truth. John 4 verse 24 says God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Angels can only be in one place at a time. A great example is the passage we just read about Daniel when he was praying to God and then God sent Gabriel to give him a message. The Bible always describes how angels go from one place to another. For example, Luke 1 verse 26. Now in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. So angels can only be in one place at a time. Only God is present everywhere, omnipresent. Proverbs 15 verse 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, keeping watch on the evil and the good. And God says in Jeremiah 23, Am I a God near at hand, says the Lord, and not a God afar off? Can anyone hide himself in secret places? So I shall not see him, says the Lord. Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord. So God is everywhere. He sees you when you are with people and he also sees you when you are alone. Those times when you think nobody sees you, nobody knows what you're thinking or what you're doing. God sees you. There is rank and order among the angels, God's army, just like any other army on earth. And remember, we already talked about the archangel and that title already shows us that the archangel has authority over other angels. And we also know that Michael is also called as one of the chief princes in Daniel 10 verse 13. So there are more chief princes, but it looks like Michael is one of the main leaders in the army of God. Read it with me. Revelation 12 verse 7. And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought. But they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, the serpent of all, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Another interesting thing about angels is that angels do not marry like we do here on earth. Jesus said in Matthew 22 verse 29, You are mistaken, not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God, for in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like 
angels of God in heaven. Now, this doesn't say that we will become angels when we go to heaven. It is saying that when we go to heaven, we will be just like the angels who do not marry each other. It will be a different kind of world. Perfect. But we, right now, it's hard to imagine it because we don't understand it yet. But someday, we will. Angels are very, very powerful. But Psalm 103 verse 19 to 20 says, The Lord has established His throne in heaven, and His kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, you His angels, who excel in strength, who do His word. So they excel in strength, and they are greater than us right now. 2 Peter 2 verse 11 says, Whereas angels who are greater in power and might. So right now we are made lower than the angels. In Hebrew 2 verse 6 says, What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you take care of him? And verse 7 says, You have made him a little lower than the angels. But this will not always be the case because the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 6 verse 2 to 3, Do you not know that the saints will judge the world? And if the world will be judged by you, are you unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Do you not know that we shall judge angels? Yes, that's right. We will judge the world and the angels. Now, I'm not exactly sure how this will happen, so I'd rather not say anything more than that. But we do know that the angels are very, very powerful. 2 Kings 19 verse 35 says, and that night, the angel of the Lord went out and struck down 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians. Angels also help and protect us. Hebrews 1 verse 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? And Psalm 91 verse 11 says, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. So angels will help and protect us, but we should never ever pray or worship an angel. It is very, very dangerous. John almost did it. Revelation 19 verse 10 says, And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, See that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. Worship God. Now, I just want to warn you here. If ever you would see a being appear to you and it says, I am an angel of the Lord, be very, very careful because you don't know if it is an angel of the Lord or a fallen angel that appears to you in the form of one of God's angels, because it could be. 2 Corinthians 11 verse 14 says, For Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness. So be very careful here and test everything with Scripture. You have to make sure that everything you believe fits in with Scripture. If it is in contrast with what Scripture says, then you know it is not an angel of the Lord. Think about this. The devil and his demons are very, very clever. They've lived for thousands of years and they've been dealing with humans for a very long time. So they know how to deceive us. Take some time and do a bit of research and look at how most of the other religions were founded through supposed angels. Islam, a supposed angel appeared to Muhammad. Seventh-day Adventism, a supposed angel appeared to Ellen G. White. The New Age Movement, they received their information from spirit guides. Mormonism, a supposed angel appeared to Joseph Smith. Now, these supposed angels make humans feel special because they are the chosen one and they believe it. But they give them doctrines that is so far away from Scripture that it is actually just on another level. But anyway. The Bible warned us that this would happen. Galatians 1 verse 8 to 9 says, But even if we, or an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel to you 
than that we have preached to you. Let him be accursed. Look, the devil and his demons are very clever. They know there is only one way, one truth to Jesus Christ, to God Almighty, to be saved. So, of course, they would lie and try to confuse us with many other truths so, so that there's too many and we'll be confused and we don't know which path is the right one to take. Now, some people say it doesn't matter what path you take up the hill, you'll get to the same destination. It's a lie when it comes to the truth of life itself, because there is only one way, one truth, and that is Jesus Christ. 1 John 14 verse 6, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If ever you get a revelation, a dream or some weird being just appearing to you and giving you something new, a new truth, and you are the special one that is chosen to get this new truth, if it's not the truth of the Bible, it is a lie. And it is not a message from God, but a message from a demon or even the devil himself. And we, as the church, should always follow Scripture. We live in a time where people start to just move away from Scripture, but we should get back to Scripture. And I will leave you with these words from Martin Luther. Sola Scriptura. Only Scripture. Now, if you want to know why you can trust the Bible, the Word of God, if you have any doubts, then please watch this playlist right here and I'll see you there. Now remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee.